Let's talk about Tennessee football for just a minute. Now, we could discuss any number of different things that are absolutely hysterical in this. I mean, they are all hilarious. Uh, whether and, and we'll read some of Ross Dellinger's quick tweets to go through the La La Nails part where they were paying for a visit to a nail salon along with Chesapeake's at Seafood Restaurant, etc. Uh, Niedermeyer and Gunn paid for this. Uh, there were... A recruiting or there was a recruiting trip to Gatlinburg, uh, which they paid for Ripley's Aquarium of the Smokies. The, the school and the coaches paid for two hundred twenty-five dollars at McDonald's. They paid for uh, let's see, Jeremy Pruitt apparently doled out cash himself directly to recruits and their families, which is absolutely mind blowing. Uh, a meal from Calhoun's on the river while they were on the river in a student athlete provided uh, boat like fishing boat, there were a ton of different things as far as the mitigating factors, right? They say that Tennessee acted swiftly and cooperated with the NCAA. Now, what I'm basically all of this, when you get down to it, shows that Tennessee coaches, et cetera. Oh, and, and of course, Jeremy Pruitt's wife provided some of the payments for car payments and whatever else, which is insane because Pruitt's wife used to be a compliance director at Florida State, etc. This, you look at it, $60,000-ish. It's basically nothing in regards to all the NIL stuff that is occurring right now, but at the time that this stuff occurred, and even now, it is still NCAA violations. It's still major, major violations. 18 level ones. Like, I don't know the last time a school had that many level ones. Um, what I'm curious about, there is no major media out there that is really talking about how big of a deal this is because the current Tennessee administration has convinced everybody, much the same way that Ole Miss did back in the day, etc. They convinced everybody that, hey, uh, there's nothing big here. We got rid of the coach. We got rid of all the issues, da 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 And yes, while the NCAA may be switching, it, there we may have a completely different NCAA. We may have no NCAA, et cetera. We know that Mark Emmert is resigning. Somebody's going to take over that post next summer. Like There are big things going on with the NCAA. So a lot of people think that they have no teeth right now. And that may be true. That may be 100% true. But what I'm curious about is the idea that it, it, the exemplary cooperation, the administration did that in order to avoid the $12.6 million buyout by Jeremy Pruitt. Like, that, they self-reported all of this. Would the NCAA have ever dug up all of this stuff? I mean, the details on this were insane. Which, there was there was one of them, by the way, and you, you should go listen to uh, Dan Wetzel and Pat Forty's podcast, where they discuss the fact that there was an unknown seafood restaurant where the coaches spent $125 on it. Like, why do you have expense reports on stuff like this for recruits? Why are you not paying cash? Why is your name associated with this? Like, the, the coaches were renting out hotel rooms in their name for kids to come in on unofficial visits, which is a clear NCAA violation. It's almost like this coaching staff had never coached in the NCAA before. Like, they had never been a part of any of this. I mean, it's just mind-blowing stuff when you look at it. But on the other side, would the NCAA have ever figured this stuff out if Tennessee didn't just willingly hand over all of it? And they did. And the NCAA came out and said, Tennessee, you know, was uh, they provided exemplary cooperation. But let me remind the Vols fans that don't believe that anything big will come of this, okay? Because a lot of people do believe, eh, it's no big deal right now. Uh, we'll get a couple of scholarships, you know, no nothing. I think the NCAA is moving towards not having bowl bans, and they're moving into the future. They don't want to punish the uh, current athletes at the school. They just want to punish uh, the coaches. So, you know, Jeremy Pruitt will probably get a show calls along with the other guys that were involved, et cetera. Let me remind you about Oklahoma State basketball, okay? We're talking about $300 worth of whatever payments, bribes, etc., that were done by an assistant coach that was on a different staff at Oklahoma State. 
And the NCAA still kept them out of the NCAA tournament. I'm just saying we think it's not a big deal until it becomes a big deal. Ole Miss did the same thing. It's It was under a different administration. And da, 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 da. Now, this one, we have proof. It was absolutely under Jeremy Pruitt's bunch. But just because you changed over staffs does not necessarily mean anything. We all know that the NCAA doesn't have any teeth, but could this be one last situation where they are wanting to show that they have force? They can't seem to do anything with the NIL stuff right now. They're already mad at Tennessee about this stuff, and not mad. Let me let me reverse that. Let me walk that back a little bit. They're not mad at Tennessee about this stuff. They're glad that Tennessee handed them all of this because they never would have found it on their own. But with all of the NIL stuff that's going on, are they maybe mad at the collective that shined a light on paying Nico Iamalieva? Iamalieva? Maybe I'll say it right one day. Uh, Nico getting $8 million from a collective, <laughs> quote, unquote, Tennessee. Like, the Tennessee boosters are going right back into this thing, much the way they did under Fulmer, et cetera, way back when, uh, for any of you old heads out there that remember that, of course. But this stuff, you, you better beware about this. Yeah, you got out of a $12.6 million buyout with Jeremy Pruitt. That's cool. Awesome. You still don't know what the NCAA is going to do here. So you better be careful. Don't count your chickens. Don't count your chickens just yet. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.